Vladimir Putin just sat down for over two hours with American journalist Tucker Carlson and, to be expected, he didn't hold anything back. What does the debt of $33 trillion tell us about? I would not like to use any strong language, but it is a stupid thing to do. Does anyone in the United States realize this? Some of the topics included things like the war with Ukraine, NATO, Elon Musk, and artificial intelligence. But in this video, I want to dive deep into everything that he said about the dollar, including criticizing U.S. leadership for how they use it, his admissions about BRICS, and the one question Tucker asked him about China that made him chuckle. So let's just rip the bandaid off. Vladimir Putin said in as many different ways as possible that he thinks the dollar is a tool and is the cornerstone of the United States' power. Now, I'm not just going to sit here and pretend like I love everything that Putin has ever done or has ever said, but in this case, I actually think he might have a point. So let's play a small clip and unpack what he said and then put his logic to the test. To tee this up, Tucker asked him a question about the US dollar, how it has united the world to a disadvantage of some and an advantage of others if the dollar status as the world reserve currency is going away and how sanctions have changed the dollar status overall. You know, to use the dollar as a tool of foreign policy struggle is one of the biggest strategic mistakes made by the US political leadership. The dollar is the cornerstone of the United States power. I think everyone understands very well that no matter how many dollars are printed, they are quickly dispersed all over the world. Inflation in the United States is minimal. It's about 3 or 3.4 percent, which is, I think, totally acceptable for the US. But they won't stop printing. What does the debt of $33 trillion tell us about? It is about the emission. This has generally been the overall message from countries like Russia trying to become more autonomous from the dollar that the United States is using the dollar as a tool, knowing full well the power that the dollar has and how seemingly any small change like inflationary adjustments or printing, etc., can have a much larger impact on the global economy. Let's dive into his comments about inflation in the United States, the printing of the dollar and how the two are linked, because his argument is if the United States inflation inflation is at a reasonable level, then why do they feel the need to print more and more currency? Let's look at both over the last 25 years, starting with money supply. We can see that dollars in circulation steadily climbed between the years 2000 and 2020. Then we all know what happened. A global pandemic created economic panic for all countries, not just the United States, but more money was needed to be in circulation to help stimulate the economy by giving money to individuals, businesses, etc. So after the very steep line in 2020, it went up a little more, but has started to come down recently. And when we look at inflation, the chart looks a little different. Periods of up and down, which is normal. We see the financial crisis in 2008, but let's look after 2020, inflation skyrockets to around 9%, the highest since the 1970s, but has come down and has been hovering under 4% since. Every country has a central bank. For the United States, it's the Federal Reserve, and they are the ones in charge of evaluating market conditions and determining whether or not they need to make adjustments to the money supply. And there are a few ways they can do that, but more simply, if the increase in money circulating the economy is growing faster than the amount of goods produced, there is now more money chasing not as many goods. This is a prime example of what happened after the global pandemic. Now, while I do understand that US inflation can theoretically get exported around the world, something that Putin alluded to in his interview, I don't think that this example is a situation where the United States used the dollar as a weapon. It was merely to protect the economy by injecting more dollars into the economy to help reduce things like unemployment and people losing their homes, things that other countries had to deal with as well. His next talking point from that clip was talking about the U.S. debt crisis. Now, he actually quoted the U.S. of having $33 trillion worth of debt, and it's actually $34.2 trillion and still counting. He says the words, what does the debt of $33 trillion tell us about? It is about the admission. And personally, I can't lie, this one got me thinking. He didn't add any extra context, but what did he mean? An admission for what? The fact that they're using the dollar as an investing tool, forcing countries to hold dollars for settlement currencies or to purchase oil with, or despite all of their challenges, still having one of the most stable and safest investment platforms in the world. Investors give the US government dollars to help fund their operation, and in return, the investor receives the money back 
back at the end of the term with interest on top. Maybe this next clip will help give a little more context as he continues to talk about the dollar being weaponized. It is the main weapon used by the United States to preserve its power across the world. As soon as the political leadership decided to use the US dollar as a tool of political struggle, a blow was dealt to this American power. I would not like to use any strong language, but it is a stupid thing to do and a grave mistake. Look at what is going on in the world. Even the United States allies are now downsizing their dollar reserves. Seeing this, everyone starts looking for ways to protect themselves. But the fact that the United States applies restrictive measures to certain countries, such as placing restrictions on transactions, freezing assets, etc., causes grave concern and sends a signal to the whole world. He might have a case here. How do countries now not look at their dollar wallet and think, could this happen to us too? Could our dollars, likely billions of dollars worth for many countries, just be removed or illegitimized just like that? Now. In fairness, Russia did attack another country, putting innocent lives at risk, citizens like you and me. So should they be punished for that globally? Probably. Should it come in the way of freezing up their dollars? I'm not so sure. And Putin talks about his motivations for the war on Ukraine and gives his historical thoughts of how this whole situation shakes out. So for more context, I encourage you to check it out for yourself because I'm definitely not an expert of the Ukrainian-Russia border situation. But I do think at some point, other countries need to evaluate the situation when they look at their dollar wallet and say, what if I woke up one morning and all our dollars were null and void? I will ask you, should a country or its economy have this much control? So on this next topic, Putin is right again when he says that even US allies are trying to reduce their reliance on the dollar. Like France's president who has done things like pleading to the European Union that they need to be more autonomous from the United States. He famously tried to invite himself to the 2023 BRIC summit as a spectator and has transacted with the Chinese Yuan for liquefied natural gas, something that had been a first from a European nation in a very long time. Japan, one of the largest holders of US debt, has started to slowly sell off their positions. And sure, part of that is because of their own economic slowdown, but the other part is they just don't wanna to have too many eggs in one basket. Both France and Japan are G7 countries, which is supposed to be the greatest group of countries in the world in terms of economically and ideology, but even they are not immune to this global shift. And Putin also mentioned the classic comparison of G7 versus BRICS. He quoted that in 1992, the G7 countries made up about 47% of the global economy, whereas BRICS was about only 16%. In 2023, the BRICS countries surpassed the G7 countries in the same statistic, which isn't the end all be all, but it's just a good example of how the world is shifting. And the final clip in regards to his comments on the dollar, talk about de-dollarization. But to my surprise, he didn't mention the word de-dollarization at all. Not once in a two hour interview, which makes me think de-dollarization is a completely overblown and buzzy phrase that's good for article headlines and YouTube videos, but not for reality. Let's take a listen to what he says about how the dollar was used before the attack on Ukraine and after and its current utility in the global economy. What did we have here? Until 2022, about 80% of Russian foreign trade transactions were made in US dollars and euros. US dollars accounted for approximately 50% of our transactions with third countries. While well, currently it is down to 13%. It wasn't us who banned the use of the US dollar. We had no such intention. It was decision of the United States to restrict our transactions in US dollars. I think it is complete foolishness from the point of view of the interests of the United States itself and its taxpayers, as it damages the US economy, undermines the power of the United States across the world. By the way, our transactions in Yuan accounted for about 3%. Today, 34% of our transactions are made in rubles and about as much, a little over 34% in Yuan. So, like I mentioned, Putin doesn't say de-dollarization specifically, but in this case, it's a byproduct of the impact caused by the conflict with Ukraine. So, Russia 
had to pivot and they chose to get closer to China economically because they literally had nowhere else to go. But this trend of using less dollars is happening in more than just Russia. Last year, the yuan surpassed the dollar when it came to cross-border transactions in and out of China. And it feels like we are seeing a news report every other week of two countries making an agreement to use their local currencies for specific transactions. Transactions that used to be made in the dollar. Let's transition now to Putin's thoughts on some of the BRICS countries and the one question that actually made him giggle. But before we get into any of that, I make videos about world news impacting the dollar. So if you like these reactionary style videos on world leaders talking about the dollar and you want to see more of them, make sure to subscribe to the channel. The BRICS, for example, in danger of being completely dominated by the Chinese, the Chinese economy, uh, in a way that's not good for their sovereignty. Do you worry about that? <laughs> Well, we have heard those boogeyman stories before. So this seems like another thing that has been completely overblown in the media. Is China the largest economy within BRICS? Absolutely. But many people seem to think that they are just calling all the shots and are in full control of BRICS. And meanwhile, the other countries are just there as China's puppets. Putin would go on to say that cooperation between the BRICS countries has been growing and growing and growing. And he didn't call out BRICS expansion specifically, but I would have to think that this is mostly what he was talking about. Then he talks specifically about China and Russia's economic relationship. Apparently, they had a bilateral trade goal of over $200 billion in a year, and according to Putin, they exceeded that mark with $230 billion. And yes, a part of that was out of necessity since Russia, again, had nowhere else to turn. And as far as BRICS is concerned, Putin reminded everyone that the BRICS summit will be held in Russia in 2024, meaning that Putin will be the one leading all discussions as him and his team will be bringing different ideas to the table. There have been a lot of speculative ideas coming from Russian leadership the past couple months. Seemingly, a BRICS currency keeps getting floated around, but also the idea of BRICS creating their own credit ratings agency as they believe the current ones are biased to emerging countries. Putin went on to say that he believes the West is more afraid of a strong China than a strong Russia. And in my opinion, I don't think they're afraid of either. They had no problem freezing dollars and transactions with Russia, and they have no problems limiting technology being shared with China or relocating their manufacturing business to de-risk away from them. De-risk, another buzzy word. This final small clip from Putin might actually be the most powerful. Does anyone in the United States realize this? What are you doing? You are cutting yourself off. All experts say this. Ask any intelligent and thinking person in the United States what the dollar means for the US. But you're killing it with your own hands. I do tend to agree with him here that people in the United States have no clue any of this is going on and they tend to take the dollar for granted as the world's reserve currency, if they even know what any of that means. I do think all these stories are very underreported in the Western media, which to be honest with you is why I started making videos about them. I'm just one simple man making one simple video at a time, so if you appreciate that, make sure to smash the like button. I'll be linking the full interview for you down in the description so you can get the full context of the video. I really encourage you to watch the entire thing, even if you hate hate Vladimir Putin. He made some good points though, especially when talking about the US debt crisis. So if you wanna dig a little deeper and find out all of the implications the US debt has on the entire world, make sure to check out this video here. 